Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Hall, and today we're going to discuss a much needed topic with guidance and higher spiritual perspective from the angels. Let's talk about the spiritual meaning of illness. Let's start with the basics. All levels of our being, mind, body, and spirit, are perfectly united. What we see showing up at one level of being will show up in some form everywhere else. In other words, what you do to your mind, you do to your body and spirit, and vice versa. All physical illnesses and injuries appear energetically within the spiritual plane of being. These vibrations correspond to particular mental and emotional states. For example, one might experience the common cold corresponding with the unique vibrations of stress in that individual's life. Our physical experiences are inseparable from our spiritual growth and consciousness. Our bodies are the perfect containers and reflectors of that spiritual growth. The body instantly, constantly, and intelligently responds to all that we are in the mental and spiritual planes. The body thus plays a powerful role in our spiritual growth, as it can help guide our awareness of spiritual awakening. Isn't that incredible? The body is a magnificent and perfect temple for the soul. Now, perhaps you've heard of this concept before, that illnesses have a spiritual meaning and correlate with thoughts and beliefs. This is a fairly well-discussed topic among spiritual thinkers, especially those who explore the law of attraction, the concept that what you think attracts and shapes the experiences of your reality. While much of the spiritual literature out there regarding this topic is quite useful, I have noticed that it's also quite common for people to misinterpret this kind of thinking in such a way that they end up judging illness or injury as spiritual failure. I have an extremely important message that I have received for years from the angels regarding this. It's time to end the stigma. It's time to debunk the idea that when we manifest something seemingly negative, it must be because we have somehow failed to be perfect or have fallen off the spiritual path. In truth, it's impossible to fall off the spiritual path because the spiritual path is your life and you're always in harmonious alignment with divine perfection, no matter the outward appearance. Because the divine never abandons you. Divine harmony and perfection are forces from which you are inseparable. According to the angels, the correlation between body, mind, and spirit does not suggest that illness or injury equate to failure. That assumption is not only unhelpful, but also an incredibly short-sighted, oversimplified, and inaccurate perception of how the correlation between body, mind, and spirit actually works. According to the angels, illness and injury serve a holy, uplifting, cleansing, and transformationally empowering purpose in our lives. So what is that purpose? Well, According to the angels, the spiritual meaning of illness is not really something that you can place beneath a universal blanket definition. Each person's experience of illness or injury in relation to his or her mental and spiritual state is unique and highly nuanced in its meaning. As nuanced, unique, and individualized as the person themselves. And so too is the path of healing. However, there are a few universal truths that can apply to all of us. They are as follows. Number one, illness and injury shift our relationship with ourselves. Number two, illness and injury shift our relationships with others. And number three, illness and injury shift our relationship with the world. Now let's go deeper. 
every single experience you attract in this life, whether seemingly positive or negative, serves your awakening. So every illness or injury you experience serves you with the opportunity and potential to awaken to the divine truth of your unity and spiritual identity within Source. How you choose to respond to these experiences will influence what you get out of them, but generally, suffering always provides potential and opportunity. But let's get something straight about suffering. Number one, suffering is not a necessary ingredient in your awakening. We don't need it in order to know the divine. But when we do manifest it, it can often deliver us into divine knowingness powerfully. More on that in just a moment. Number two, we are the source of our own suffering. God does not punish us by sending us experiences that cause us to suffer. God is the force of unconditional love. Unconditional. Think about what that word means. It means that no matter who you are, what you do, what you think, or how you feel, God is a force of all loving power that is constantly, infinitely, and eternally yours. God gives us no challenges. We give them to ourselves. God gives us no judgment. We do that. God puts up absolutely no barriers of separation between you and it. No obstacle courses or lessons that you must conquer in order to know it. We do those things. God is a consciousness of pure love and perfection that transcends the very possibility to suffer. All suffering comes from the illusion of separation from the divine. And since the divine is absolutely indivisible, no suffering can come from it. Suffering results only from human ego, the illusory perception of separation. Now, number three, and this one takes us back to the original point. Everything that we attract, experience, do, think, and feel leads us back to God. Everything serves our awakening. So even when you think a thought that seems to drive you into deeper separation from God, your soul immediately launches out a vibration that causes your life experiences to rearrange themselves in such a way that increases and intensifies your potential to consciously reunite with full awareness of God. Even the alcoholic who chooses another drink is choosing God. Because perhaps that drink is the step they personally needed to hit their rock bottom. A state of being that creates such an intense drive and desire to be well, that the only direction to go is back into the heart of God. We don't need suffering in order to awaken, but we often manifest it. No matter what we do, the divine is our true identity. And that part of ourselves is infinitely, constantly, and eternally holding us in love, unity, well-being, harmony, and truth. The more we contradict our true nature, the stronger we launch ourselves back into it. Our inevitable return to wholeness and unity with our true divine nature is the path of healing. And though it's not always comfortable, it is medicine for the soul. It expands, awakens, and finesses our consciousness in such a way that causes us to unify with truth and well-being, usually with greater strength and awareness than we had before the healing began. Illness and injury are powerful medicines of consciousness. They are teachers and catalysts for our collective awakening. Your soul knows a whole lot more about this mysterious dance with the divine than your ego does. So, surrender to it, trust it, and respond to all that you manifest with great reverence, gratitude, and love for yourself. Now let's get back to the three universal ways that illness and injury alter us. Our relationships with ourselves, each other, and the world. 
In our relationships with ourselves, illness and injury always open the gates of opportunity to greater self-love. And in greater self-love, we develop higher self-awareness, expand our awakening to the realization of God. You take your body with you into every experience that you have in the earth plane. Your body is a highly intelligent instrument that enables you to perceive reality through a very specific lens. Illness and injury usually color that lens of perception everywhere. If you have the flu, you don't just get to turn it off like a switch so that you can conveniently keep on going with your usual routine and perspective. Instead, you usually stay in bed and surrender yourself to holding space for the experiences within your body. This surrender unifies all of your energy at every level of being into healing. That unification pulls you out of dysfunction and forces a reset in which your mind, body, and spirit are now all serving and supporting each other in the return to well-being. Healing requires a mass unification of self. And unification always serves us. Illness and injury also shift your relationship with others. It places you in a unique perspective in which you must directly experience how dependent we human beings are upon each other. Illness and injury often force you to enter into the receiving end of compassion, empathy, and care from others, thereby naturally creating a shift in the way you relate with the concepts of partnership, family, tribe, or society. Illness and injury thus open the gates to the opportunity to awaken to unity at the level of relationships with others. This not only awakens the person who is sick or injured, but also provides the opportunity to awaken for the people who are caring for the sick or injured. Now, how does illness or injury shift your relationship with the world? Your physical body is a piece of the earth and it is your most intimate and consistent mode of communing with the earth. You literally put pieces of earth inside of your body every time that you eat or drink, and then those pieces of earth become a physical part of you. It doesn't get more intimate than that. Illness often asks you to transform your relationship with the world so as to shift you into harmony with the forces of nature. For example, an illness might require you to shift your diet in order to heal, thereby supporting a style of living and eating that better supports the balance of nature. You see, your relationship with the earth is symbiotic, which means that what is truly good and healthy for you is also healthy for the earth's entire web of life. Mother Earth feels and is highly aware of everything that occurs upon her, and that includes you. Your body, after all, is a piece of her. Illness can thus often be a response to calibrating with nature. That calibration is the healing path. It is the divine intelligence of harmony working through you. You see, your body, just like the earth, is filled with ancient, instinctual intelligence that knows exactly how to exist in perfect harmony and balance with all. And it never falls out of step with the greater harmonious tapestry of the universe. The journey of healing offers our human consciousness the opportunity to face and deepen our awareness of that treasure trove of inherited instinctual ancient knowledge and actualize it. It offers us an opportunity to shift in our relationship with the earth in such a way that we realize and live from our unity with it. Realizing our unity at all levels, physically, interpersonally, spiritually, is the destiny of our species. At every level of being, healing is an awakening into greater unity. This is the spiritual meaning of illness. 
So rather than judging or resisting such experiences as bad or wrong, respond to them with a surrender into love, a trustful, a fearless, loving acceptance into the higher divine intelligence that unites all. Respond with humble acceptance and openness to the gifts that the experience is giving you. Thank you so much for watching. Do keep in touch and remember as always that you are forever loved and blessed. Bye.